Thanks for joining another ITY video with top Australian IT executives. I'm here with Will Bosma. He's the Vice President Asia Pacific for MuleSoft. And of course, it's traditional to ask, what is MuleSoft, David? And uh, what is your role with the company? Yeah, thanks, Alex. Um, yeah, MuleSoft, an interesting name. We are at our heart a connectivity platform. So we provide integration solutions that allows companies to pretty much connect any application, mm -hmm. any data source, any device. Um, really for competitive advantage. So our mission is to connect all of the world's applications, devices and data sources, which sounds pretty ambitious, mm. but at its heart, that, that, that implies a couple of things. Firstly, we're a very focused company, so integration is all that we do. Secondly, we're trying to help organisations extend the life of their existing IT assets so mm -hmm. that they can put wrappers around those and connect them with the things they need to today but also helping them take advantage of new opportunities such as cloud, SaaS, mobile, et cetera. And so, um, uh, you know, Vice President Asia Pacific, what, what's yeah. your role at the company? Yeah, so look, I have the privilege of leading the company across Asia Pac. I was brought on board 20 months ago to start mm -hmm. the operation. And that was when MuleSoft started in Australia? Yeah, that was when we started. So the very first uh, operation was here in Australia and New Zealand. Um, so in that time, since that time, we've been f fortunate enough now to open offices in Singapore and Hong Kong as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we've we really had a stellar run in terms of um, getting some significant clients on board. We've now in our third office in Sydney in 20 months, so it's been quite a growth ride. Um, and we look forward to more of the same. I know you were saying it was ambitious to want to connect all the world's devices, but I'm sure it was ambitious when Google said it wanted to organize all the world's information. And it seems yep. to have worked out well for them. And also, you sound, it sounds like you were stubbornly focused on, on wanting to do all this with the, the MuleSoft name. I mean, I know it's on the website, but what's the brief history of the, the MuleSoft name? Yeah, you know, that's a, it's a question I get asked all, all the time. time so yeah. so when, when Ross Mason, who is, the, who is the founder of our organization, was, was putting the company together, you know, he kept talking about taking the donkey work out of integration. He found that it was uh, a difficult, a complex problem or a difficult problem to solve, but really he felt that there had to be a better way and he wanted to take the repetitive donkey work out of it. Now, clearly Donkey Soft is not a great name for an organisation. And it probably sounds like Donkey Kong as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so uh, what he decided on was MuleSoft. And, and that was really, I guess, because of the mule's reputation for being able to do hard work all day. Yeah, that. well, there you go. There Very you good. Go. Now, you know, some of the big name competitors you think might be Oracle or IBM's or Software IG's, but what what else differentiates MuleSoft from from its competitors? Yeah, we, we certainly compete with, with all of those organizations. And, I, you know, I think we're fundamentally different in, in probably three or four ways. The first is unlike those traditional competitors, we offer connectivity solution that is what we call a unified platform. So you can do integration either in the cloud or on-premise or a combination mm -hmm. and it's just the one technology platform. And so MuleSoft is, is really a platform that's been built and designed in the era of the cloud and it's cloud ready. I think that's really important. You know, the second thing is um, we're, a, we're a platform that is very easy to use. So one of the key things is people get results very quickly with the MuleSoft platform. Mm -hmm. So if you're a, a Java developer, we use all of the standard tooling that Java developers are very used to and it becomes, for them, a very simple experience to onboard to the platform and become productive very quickly. So unified in the sense of, you know, cloud and on-premise, easy to use, we provide a lot of productivity tools, so mm -hmm. we provide tools that make it easy to integrate applications like Salesforce, um, things like templates that allow people to re repeat integration patterns over and over again um, and do that very quickly and easily. And then, you know, I, th I think uh, the other key thing is we are on that same platform, we provide the ability to not only manage APIs, but to actually build, well, sorry, design, build, manage, and then run APIs. So all of that on a single platform, equally at home, in the cloud, on-premise. And then, you know, finally, we're an open source company, and I think in increasingly organizations are comfortable with what that means, because what it means is there's a huge community, community of developers that are uh, coalescing around the MuleSoft platform. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so easy Which access to resources. Great, great to have all that support from yep. the developer community. Yep, easy access to resources, great support, lots of extensions available. Um, and you know, a lot of a lot is put back into the platform from that community. So it's it's a really innovative environment. And I've noticed that Gartner has put you in the, in its magic quadrant in a couple of places. So that's obviously yeah. a good validation too. Yeah, it is. It's great validation because we're the only company that's in both the, the magic quadrant for both on-premise integration as well as um, integration platform as a service or, or what we call Cloud Hub internally. So great validation and and obviously. That helps us get in the door in many cases, mm -hmm. but I, I think the other thing that distinguishes us, if we if we move away from the technology for a moment, is is we're a very um, agile company. Mm -hmm. We're a comp we're a subscription company, so we're very focused on the customer relationship. Yeah, we don't sell a piece of software and walk away. That's it. Yeah, and I think customers appreciate that as a different experience. Yeah, well, that's become the way that uh, the the services are delivered today. Yep. My subscription, regular updates, and um, a focus on um, making sure that customers have to keep having to pay that monthly monthly fee as opposed to trying to resell something every three years. Yeah, I think it, it, it fundamentally changes the relationship. For the better. For the better. Yeah, And, and certainly in favour of the customer. So speaking of customers, who are the types of companies and industries that uh, you know, are really coming on board to, to get everything connected? Yeah. You know, when you think about it, Alex, pretty much everyone's got a connectivity problem. If you've got more than one application, uh, then somehow you've got to connect those things together. And, and to other companies as well. And to other companies. Yeah. And, and obviously we're talking about the API integration. Um, and we, we see integration as a $500 billion problem. That's what that's what globally... Isn't it a trillion spend. dollar problem? <laughs> it's at least $500 billion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, the sorts of companies that are really embracing the platform um, we, we find are actually companies who have got pretty significant initiatives on, particularly around the customer and the customer experience. They want to do something quickly to respond to that. Um, and whilst that, you know, that situation applies to every industry, typical customers today, um, healthcare industry, where there's a lot happening, insurance where you know, the paradigm of buying, researching and buying insurance has changed significantly. Mm. Especially uh, with all its comparison services. Yeah, exactly, yeah. with the comparison services and now everybody wants to be able to do that on their mobile device, you, you know, make a decision and, and procure the insurance straight away. And every comparison service wants to cream that little bit off the top for having brought that customer and to the And each one of those is a connectivity problem at some level. So, so we see, and we've had great success in insurance. Media is the other interesting one and, and uh, you know, great names have become customers like News Corporation here and Foxtel, Fox Sports. Mm -hmm. You know, it, that involves um, creating APIs, for example, to to do new applications that allow consumers to consume publications mm -hmm. like yeah. your own, um, but also um, you know applications to get content to screen, which is kind of interesting. So great, great stuff in all of those places. Any other big Australian names? I know the website lists all sorts of logos there. But... Um, yeah, well, there's a whole bunch of them. Gee, we've been so fortunate, I can't remember them all. We, look, with Telstra, I talked about news, I talked about Foxtel, Fox Sports. Um, we've been very fortunate in higher education, so uh, organisations like Curtin and Deakin University, Swinburne. Yeah. Um, we've been very fortunate I'm not sure if I can mention the name, but we've sure. just secured a, a large contract with the New South Wales government, which we yep. think is is for us the great basis to to do a lot more with government at the state level. Um, and we see a lot of impetus behind state governments taking advantage of the cloud and looking more for open source based solutions. So and we've had particular success in New Zealand as well. So very fortunate there. Um, I guess the other industry you know that comes to mind when we talk about that is retail. So Dick Smith, um, Convita in New Zealand, Woolworths, Dan Murphy's, all great examples of companies who have chosen Yoursoft in the last 18 months or so. And so you mentioned some of the customer needs, but what else is at the top of their agendas in, in coming to talk to you? I mean, clearly integrating things and using the APIs, yeah. but there must be other things as well. Yeah, hey, transformation, and I, I say this to my, to my team out there, is probably the most overused word in the English language. Like paradigm. A little bit. <laughs> But, it's, but, it, but it is true, at, at, truth at a level, a lot of organizations have some sort of transformation program. A lot of that um, revolves around 
improving the digital customer experience. Um, and that typically will mean they've got a multi-channel initiative. I've got to do something with my mobile and tablet apps, mm -hmm. um, particularly in my direct-to-consumer business. I've got to do something different about the supply chain and, and providing people with options. You know, when we think about retail, buy online, deliver to store, buy mm -hmm. online, deliver to home, buy yep. online, deliver to a local service station. Um, so lots of initiatives around uh, the digital customer um, and increasingly initiatives around how do I expose myself to other businesses by using APIs. Um, so they're, they're the two things. And what we see, there's a real there's a real kind of split happening in organisations and, and we see that, we call that two-speed IT. So, um, and the analysts are beginning to refer to it as well. So we see that what a lot of organisations are saying is I've got all of these systems of record, my accounting systems and so on. Mm -hmm. They're pretty stable, but I don't change them very much. And I'm probably using one of those platforms we talked about earlier. So I've got Oracle, I've got IBM. Or Salesforce. So. Well, but I'm, I'm talking about integration sure, or sure. software AG. Yeah. And we say, leave that. If it's working, don't, we're not here to rip and replace yeah. that. But we'll what organisations are saying is, I got this issue at the front. I, I need to find a better way to connect the data to the audiences that I've got to serve. Mm -hmm. my, my customers in particular, my partners and my employees. And how can I do that quickly? And that's where MuleSoft comes to the fore. So that's what I mean by two speed. The closer you get to the front office, the more innovation and agility is required, the more MuleSoft tends to get chosen. And clearly this is this is part of a huge API-led economy that's just that's now booming. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm reminded of the hype cycle from time to time. Yeah, but the plateau of productivity. And yeah, the... all of that. <laughs> uh, but look, it's very clear. I think API-led integration is, is becoming a clear imperative for a lot of the organizations we're talking about. APIs, you know, clearly APIs are required every time you want to connect a, a device. Yeah. Um, then an API is involved in connecting that device somewhere to, to a back office. But, but increasingly, people are thinking and organisations are thinking about, you know, how do, I, how do I really change the business? And how do I perhaps develop new channels? How do I develop new streams of revenue? And so in, inevitably, you have to then think about, so how do I expose my core competency my abilities, my data, my unique data, how do I expose that to audiences in a different way? And APIs are a way to do that. Mm. And that, that works at a whole bunch of levels. It can work at, well, maybe I've got multiple development teams because I'm a big diversified organization and they expose what they are doing as API so that other development teams can pick it up easily. So that's certainly becoming increasingly prevalent in terms of organizing integration projects. But secondly, well, so how do I um, expose myself, if I can use those words, hmm. as an organization to other organizations? So increasingly, APIs are becoming the basis for B2B integration. And I think we're gonna see a lot more of that as time goes by. And are you doing any work with uh, integrating the Internet of Things? I mean, it was still a little bit too early for that. Yeah, no, we are. Uh, I mean, clearly APIs, again, if you want to connect devices, then APIs are, are very much a part of uh, being able to connect to the Internet of Things. We've been working for some time and continue to work on a project that we call MuleSoft Edge. Mm -hmm. um, and that really is a, is a distribution of MuleSoft, which is extraordinarily lean. And that, that instance of MuleSoft, if you like, can run on extraordinarily small devices, including things like um, Raspberry Pi devices mm. and so on. So we are doing quite a bit of work in that whole Internet of Things with, with a few key customers. And uh, what are some of the other great opportunities for you now and, and um, you know, some of the other things that you'd like the listeners to, to know about, about MuleSoft, you know? Yeah, the, well, the opportunities for us are pretty much are boundless. Um, you, you know, the, the integration problem is actually not getting smaller for organisations. Increasingly, as we spoke about, they want to take advantage of SaaS cloud applications. Mm -hmm. So every time someone makes a decision for Salesforce or Workday or ServiceNow or NetSuite, the second question is, okay, so now how do I integrate that? And so that becomes an opportunity for us. And, and frankly, I only see that growing. I, I spend a lot of time with those organizations as partners. Mm -hmm. And listening to their concerns. And listening to them, listening to their customers. 
Um, and uh, the opportunities for us in that ecosystem are pretty much unbounded. So I think that's certainly one, right? And, and you know, the increasing adoption of cloud, pretty strong already in, in Australia. Um, it's really beginning to take off now in New Zealand. And I think increasingly we'll start to see up through Asia, uh, people truly adopting cloud and being much more comfortable in having um, integration platform as a service. And that creates huge opportunity for us. And then, and then thirdly, the API economy. I, you know, I think that there is still an awful long way to go for organisations. Um, and I think many organisations are still wrestling with some of those questions about, you know, my world is changing very quickly. How do I respond to that? And how do I build an agility layer that's going to allow me to take advantage of this? So I'd imagine over the next 12 months, you would have a lot more companies getting with the program, understanding it, having a lot more APIs built out. So, uh, and a lot of what you've spoken about is, is, you know, what's happening in the future because they're working on this now. So where do you think it'll all be in, say, in a decade's time? Besides perhaps maybe, I don't know, you being on a beach or something. Yeah, <laughs> I'd certainly have to be on a beach by then. Yeah, you know, a decade is, is, is very difficult to look at. What, sure. what oh, I could the next say, few years. You know. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think we've hit on some of them. So, sure, um, in, in brief. There's no question, there's no question that, that my primary challenge is this business is going to grow in at triple digits for the next three to five years. There's no no doubt about yeah. that. Um, so the biggest problem that I face practically is, you know, how do I scale the business to be able to take advantage of that? Mm. And as a small organisation, the key the key fundamental is really getting the right people in here. Mm. Um, I, I believe that we're going to see um, certainly the internet. I think everyone talks about 50 billion connected devices yeah. by by 2020. Um, you know, I'm starting when you start to see some of the some of the growth in things like drones, robots, and what that's going to mean fundamentally to to the way that society works. You know, we're going to see driverless cars, all of which requires connectivity. Yeah. Um, it, it's going to be a very interesting future. So I think I think the next three to five years is cloud and the Internet of Things. I think that they're, they're the key drivers. And uh, any final messages for ITY readers or for your uh, current or potential customers? Um, well, for our, for our current customers, obviously, we, we, we certainly want to say thanks for placing their faith in MuleSoft, and I believe that we're repaying that faith. Um, for those people who are thinking about um, what do they need to do from a connectivity platform, come and talk to us. I, I think you'll find it a very different experience to what you've been used to in the past. Okay. Thank you very much, Will. Great. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate it. You're welcome.